In this tutorial in Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, we're going to share some starting principles for using transitions. When you use transitions wisely, they help you flow your story from one clip to another or one scene to another. If they're not used wisely, they can actually disrupt the narrative that you're trying to tell. In Premiere Elements 2018, you get into your transitions by clicking on the two triangles that form a square in the icon on the right side. That will open up your transition window. You have video transitions and you have audio transitions. We're going to focus on the video transitions here. If you click on Show All, you discover that you have 15 categories of transitions. 103 to pick from. That's a lot. And what we're going to do in this lesson is just focus on a little bit on a few simple ones. So we're going to go to the most often used transition category in professional filmmaking, which is Dissolve. In order to apply a transition, all you need to do is take the one you like, click on it with the left arrow, drag and drop it, and it will snap between two video clips, and then you let go. The most common alignment is between clips, and the default duration in the program is one second. We're going to increase this to three so we can see better. There is a button called More that will show us more things that we can do. We'll look at that later. But in this tutorial, we just want to say we have a cross dissolve. It's going to be four seconds long. And I click on Done. And immediately that gives me my transition. If I go ahead and play my project from this point on, I will have this slow dissolve from one clip to the other. And so that's a nice way to go. It's very common. If I decide I want to change the transition, I double click on it. And I say, well, four seconds is too long. Let's do three and it will make it shorter. If I take another transition, let's do a dip to black and drop it between these clips. I'm going to put it on the uh, on the center again and notice the default is one second. I'll increase it to two and click on done. And then if I play this segment, it goes to black and then it comes up on my next clip. Uh, the third most common one you'll see is a dip to white. I can take this again, and I can change the time and click on Done. Go ahead and play it in my preview screen, and I'll see a dip to white, and then it comes back to the next scene. That's a really nice way in which you can take these transitions and begin to use them in your project. We'll click this button so we see everything. Now what I'd like to uh, remind you of too is you can replace a transition or remove it very easily. To remove a transition all you do is click on it and press the delete key on your keyboard and it will disappear. If you want to replace it we'll go back to our transitions window. Let's say we want to replace this one uh, with something else. I'll click down here, drag over and drop and it will simply replace it when I click on Done. So now I should have a dither dissolve in this transition here. So it, it will not add transitions, it simply overwrites what was there before. That's a nice feature. If you decide that you tend to like transitions a certain length and you don't want to keep changing the time uh, of the transition, we'll double click on this again, and say you want two seconds to be your norm even though you know you can change it anytime you want what can you do for, to to make that different let me show you a way to change the default um, I'm going to go up into my edit menu and click on preferences I have another drop down you can't see off the record screen the first option is called general so I click on the general and the preferences and then here I have my transition duration if I want the default to be uh, 2 seconds, I'll change it to 60 frames. And that will change the normal for my transitions. So now if I take another one, let's take this non-additive dissolve, drag it here. Notice the default now is 2 seconds. And I, I also want it between the clips. I'll change that. Click on Done. 
And so that will save you some time if you have a normal transition length that you like, that you prefer. Otherwise, you can change any of them, increase them or uh, decrease them according to your preferences. Another thing that you may not know is that you can actually change a transition at the end of a clip. I don't have anything I'm transitioning to here. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to take a page peel. And I'll take a page turn and drag it and drop it on the end of this clip. And I will put, it, it defaults to left clip because I have no right clip. And I'll click on done. Now when watch the transition into this uh, river scene and then at the end of the river scene. So I have one transition and then at the end it peels away to black since I have nothing following. So you can put a transition at the beginning of a clip that is not attached to another clip. Or you can put it at the end of a clip. Now what happens when you delete a clip, a video clip, that has a transition? Let's find out. I'll delete this and you notice it removes a transition at the beginning and at the end. If I want to take this page turn again and put it on the end of my shorter uh, video, then I can go ahead and play and reapply it all I want. Okay, so that gives me the end of that video. Uh, so those are some key principles. The second thing I'd like to make uh, very clear is that if you want to be the most professional in your video editing, focus on cross dissolve, dip to black, dip to white. Those are the ones that you see most often in commercials and in professional projects. We're going to survey all of the 15 categories in the next couple lessons and show you some of the variations uh, with real footage here because I find these previews to be a little bit awkward and uh, sh just show you some of the things that you can do and how they can apply in a real-world situation.